Okay, uh, Marius, would you like to kick it off? Uh, yeah, so hi everyone. Um, so yeah, uh, an update of what we were working on in the last two weeks at, in the informal team. Uh, so uh, we had the uncoordinated upgrade. So we released Gaia V1301 that contain a PFM fix. For details, uh, you can just follow the link. Uh, thanks a lot to Amulet in Strangelove. Strangelove for fixing the issue and Amulet for coordinating the emergency release. Uh, yeah, things went, I think, quite good. Uh, I'm really happy with that process. Uh, I, from my latest information, I think more than uh, more than two thirds of the network upgraded already. So, uh, yeah, I I think we are uh, we are safe. Like everything went fine. Um, another thing is we are working on cutting V14. So. As uh, we kind of got used, like the entire community, to have monthly updates, that's not something that we want to keep having monthly updates. This not the cadence is not that important as long as they are regular. So uh, we had some delays with uh, the cryptographic equivocation and with uh, zero forty seven. So that's the reason we didn't have an upgrade last uh, software proposal software upgrade proposal last month in usually we should have mid October but yeah we are working out to cut v14 with cryptographic equivocation we already have the code uh, in ICS tested we have a uh, release candidate we just have to handle one thing with uh, amnesia attacks for light clients so it's something very technical I'll not go into it but um, yeah we basically plan to upgrade the test net next Wednesday and then on Thursday or next Thursday or Friday, so next week, to have a software upgrade proposal and again two weeks, and then we get uh, the hub upgraded to V14. Um, when it comes to 047, uh, the, aud the audit was completed. Uh, there are still some discussions that are being uh, had between uh, OC security and the binary team. So thanks a lot to both of them for, uh, for helping with this. Um, we are also coordinating with Inclusion for porting uh, LSM to 047. So that's the only dependency now before we can move the move to move Gaia to 047. Um, and yeah, thanks a lot to Zaki for uh, managing a lot of that work. Um, a different uh, a different uh, direction of work is uh, upgrading. Uh, Upgrading ICS to SDK 050. So interchange security. For that, we are working on uh, we are working on the IBC integration testing framework to to upgrade it to 050. Right. So this is needed, and this is we are working with IB. So thank uh, thanks to them for uh, the collaboration and helping us. Um, another thing is Comet Mock. So this is the testing framework. This is the it's not a testing framework. It's basically a tooling that enables us to test without actually running Comet, right? So just to test applications much faster. So we did a bunch of things in the last period of time. We upgraded to we upgraded a Comet mock to work with Comet 038. This is necessary for SDK 050, which yeah, we need to upgrade. We need this for porting ICS to 050. Uh, there was a thing in SDK that uh, we helped fix uh, that now will enable the support the Comet Mock to work with Hermes, which is yeah very important to have that as well. It already works with Gori Layer, but it was important to work with Hermes as well. And also Starship integrated Comet Mock, which is amazing. So kudos to the team. And the last part is that we are continuing on making uh, to like in you know, making ICS a read-only protocol. So this is basically an idea that we had uh, from uh, the AB team like half a year ago or more. Um, and yeah, we are uh, we are trying to figure out a way to like to figure out exactly what are the problems that uh, uh, will appear with that. Uh, basically, what that means is reducing uh, getting rid of a message. Right, uh, it's uh, interchange security is a ping pong. So basically, we get rid of the pong part. Um, yeah, that's pretty much it on our side. 
Any questions? Alrighty, and feel free to ask questions at any time in the chat. Um, and we will be more than happy to answer them. Um, but I think for now we can move on to Haifa's work, Denise. Yes. Um, so our updates gonna be pretty short. Uh, we've mostly been um, Dante is continuing with uh, some of the V14 tests have been prepared already because um, a lot of them were previously written for V13 to test the cryptographic equivocation feature. Just ported those forward to support the V14 release. Um, I just looked in our CI and there's a few tests that we need to um, uh, pull forward for both of our test suites, but it's <laughs> in progress. Um, we spent a lot of time in the last two weeks on a uh, mystery <laughs> investigation, um, which is kind of interesting. Um, if anyone on this call actually has ideas about what might be happening, uh, please do get in touch with us. We're currently working with the Comet team on trying to understand exactly what the root cause is. But um, basically, uh, Bosco has silk nodes um, raised in the testnet channels on Discord a little while ago that uh, silk nodes' as validator had not produced had not proposed a block since august uh since like mid-august um there they have enough voting share on the replicated security testnet that we would expect them to be proposing one in every 40 or 50 blocks but they hadn't produced any since august so that's like well outside of the bounds of like standard deviations that we would expect so we did some investigation um and we're still trying to understand why um some of the things we've tried are uh, relocating. So um, for those of you who don't know, Haifa has three extremely large validators on the replicated security testnet. In total, our validators have, I, I think, pretty close to 60% of the voting share. So we do propose most of the blocks. Um, so we tried to replicate the issue that Silk Node saw by um, relocating one of our validators to Australia <laughs> uh, because Silk Nodes um, said that they first started seeing the issue when they migrated the data center. Uh, they migrated one of their nodes to a different data center. Um, so we thought like maybe latency could be an issue. Maybe, I don't know, some some something in the like um, proposer selection code takes that into account and punishes you if you're too slow. Um, but that wasn't it. Uh, our big validators continue to propose blocks. So we tried a couple other things like fiddling around the validator node keys, um, adjusting the mempool settings. We had tinkered a little bit with mempool settings across the whole network uh, a few weeks ago when Notional was doing their stress testing. Um, but none of those things brought the Silk Nose proposer back. So we're currently digging into exactly why with the Comet team. Um, one thing that Dante saw towards the end of last week was that uh, Silk Nodes has, um, their node has a different perspective of the world than our node does in terms of, if you look at like the um, block proposer, uh, the, I, I forget exactly which endpoint it is, but basically Silk Nodes' is, node believes that they are the next to propose a block, but our validators say that no, we're the next to propose a block. Um, so there's some definitely something weird happening there. Um, we have some theories around what might be happening, but if anyone here is knowledgeable about uh, how Comet how the Comet BFT layer uh, selects the next proposer, or if you if, if you have a node on the test net or on mainnet and have seen anything like this, please do get in touch with us. Um, this is an active and ongoing investigation. Um, otherwise, we uh, are continuing our work on Microscope, the sort of like, um, I think we've mentioned this a couple of times ago, uh, UI wrapper around the tests that are associated with each guy um, upgrade. Um, and Noble has their rehearsal at the end of November. Um, it's been pushed back a couple of times. We're hoping that uh, we, we're still on track for the end of November. So expect some comms around that. Um, if you're not on the testnet yet, please come over to the testnet and spin up some nodes so uh, we can make sure that the Noble launch on mainnet goes successfully. Um, I think that's it for us, uh, unless anyone has any questions. Regarding the problem with the proposing, with proposing, have you guys tried to run a node on a local testnet? Just a node. Was the validator, by the way? I forgot the name. Can you the mention? validator, uh, at least Silk nodes, um, okay. validator node on the replicated security testnet is being affected. Other people could also be uh, getting affected. We haven't. I don't think we've done like a full uh, analysis of because. Those. Blocks to try to run that exact configuration or know that exact configuration, maybe they have something misconfigured. There are a lot of parameters in comments, so maybe some tiny thing that nobody noticed. 
Or... Yeah. I'm pretty sure like as a result of the mempool adjusting the, like two weeks ago, um, we've shared with each other, like all of our app toml, all of our config tomals, and uh, they, they know what our nodes look like on testnet. So okay. I don't really know. Okay, what. yeah, that makes sense. It kind of feels like um, something in memory, like generally when you encounter disagreeing states of the world, I feel like in software, it's like some piece of memory not being cleared out fully or like some garbage collection operation needs to be triggered to like update, I don't know, some some belief deep, I, I don't know. I'm <laughs> just like speculating here. Um, I think we need the comment team to look into this. Cool. Well, lots of, I mean, I, I don't know if it's exciting because I'm not a technical person, but it sounds exciting. Um, so yeah. very much it's looking for yeah. like a podcast about it. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, feel free to drop the link in the agenda so people can uh, listen, but um, yeah, it's lots of exciting things. V14 is coming up, um, you know, SDK 0.5 is coming up. Um, I know we got started with a few people that weren't here. So if anybody has any questions about any of these points, like please feel free to chime in or um, drop a question in the chat. Um, but otherwise, if there are no questions, I think this one was a short and sweet one. Um, all right. Okay. Well, if uh, there's no more questions, then... Thank you everyone for coming through. Um, and if you missed the first part that you wanna hear um, Marius walk through, then we will be posting that to YouTube very shortly. So um, keep an eye out for that. Cool. Thanks everyone for joining. Thanks Isabel for hosting. Of course, bye. Bye.